than I normally do because this is a wild ride. But I'm looking for those kinds of things yeah. to connect with them. So it's not just I'm correcting behaviors all the time, adjusting behaviors. That stuff's important. But I'm also going, when I do that, I want to do it from connection. You know, like if we're really connected, if we're like locked arms, when I turn, you turn. If we're not connected at all and we're like, bro, hey, come over here, come over here, come over here. I'm trying to convince you to come with me. But if we're connected, you you come but automatically. Yeah. And so that's kind of the picture. I want to be locked in with them in our hearts. So when we need to make those adjustments, it's a lot easier for them to come along. So good, first off. Some of the things that come up for me is I'm trying to think of there's got to be a core thing that you see people doing wrong. Like you're seeing families and kids and dynamics like that. Just because we're wrapping up, I'm like, oh man, I have so many more things I want to ask. And same thing. I know, I feel I'm like, like we I'm just like, keep oh my going. Goodness. Uh, one of the things I'm thinking of is like, what's a biblical thing that maybe the world does so different that's like very simple? So like, let's say for business, a lot of times it's transactional buying and selling. Kingdom is sowing and reaping. Very yeah. good distinction. You can tell the difference and you can talk about it. And that, yeah. that's like a big epiphany. In the way that people parent and connect with their kids, what's something that the world does that maybe biblically is like, hey, this is actually like a good frame of reference to look at it. And I, I, one of them I, they, I know you teach, I thought would be good. And if there's something wrapped in it with all the families you see, what is like a core thing that you see people just constantly messing up that man if they just knew that earlier yeah <laughs> that way we don't leave people without that yeah that core thing i think a lot of times it's kind of what we're talking about trying to put a cart before the horse trying to correct a behavior without the relationship and so there's sometimes where i've literally just told parents like hey you're looking you're looking for tools but the way you're using them is still to try to control your kid i mean i think actually that's what it goes into what do i believe what's my beliefs if i'm looking to just get my kid to obey which in the in the kingdom in the in in the in the bible like obedience matters obedience is important but god actually in the garden allowed his kids to disobey and then face the consequence. He didn't wow. remove the bad choice. He left it right there. He didn't remove the serpent. He left them right there. He allowed them to make the choice he didn't want them to make. And I think the biggest thing I see with parents, and it comes from you're trying to control behavior without the relationship, I think that that's where it comes from is this belief that I'm supposed to control my kids or if I'm a good parent, I need to take away bad choices, make their good choices for them, I need to uh, control everything in their environment so that they turn into the person I know they can be rather than going, oh, I, it's not my job to control. It's my job to influence. That's what you see in the garden. God going, don't eat that tree. It'll kill you. And then he leaves the tree and he leaves the snake. So he, he's influencing them and not, not forcing them to do the thing he wants them to do. He's, he's influencing their decision, and then he lets them have the consequence. But I think it backs up all the way to, that's not my job. My job is not control. My job is influence. So I need to influence based on relationship, not just getting advice. Christians are really good at going, give me advice. Tell me what to do. I'll, I want my kids to obey. I want my kids to listen to me. Just tell me what to do so I get my kids to listen. You know, your kids will listen if you back off, listen a lot better if you back off and, and don't control them and give them some space and then have the consequences. But it starts with that mindset, that belief of my job is influence, not control. And part of that got sparked, and I'll, I'll have you wrap up with this story that, that you were talking about, the biblical story that, that we had, I had rudely interrupted. But we'll, we'll end with that. I think it's a great frame for everyone leaving here to have a... a a frame of reference, but also an anchor of thought of what's my intention leaving here? So bring us through that story. Yeah, so Judges 11, you have Jephthah is this guy. His dad sleeps with a prostitute, and so he is the child of a prostitute. And he has a, nut, a bunch of brothers that are not the children of a prostitute. So they basically kick him off the land, 
kick him out. Don't let him have any land as an inheritance. Just remove this guy from the family and the land. And so this dude is just not well. He's a great warrior, super powerful warrior. Over time, the Ammonites come in. These, this enemy that is just mad from the past and wants to take over Israel. So they're coming to war with Israel. And now the very brothers that kicked out Jephthah are coming to him going, hey, if you come in and help us and you win, if you get the victory, we will make you ruler over us. Like there wasn't kings back then. There was judges. So there's no kings yet. But basically the ruler of Israel is the judge of Israel. And they're saying, if you win this victory and save Israel from this enemy, we will make you ruler. And he's like, you will? If I win, you're going to make me ruler to the very people who kicked him out? And he, they're like, yes. And he goes, okay. So then he goes to God and goes, God, I will offer you the first thing. If I win, the first thing that comes out of my house, stupid. What a stupid thing to say. Like, what's going to come out? A goat? No, probably not. He says, whatever comes out of my house first, I'll offer to you. I'll give to you. I'll sacrifice it if you give me the victory. So he goes to war, gets the, I mean, the story is longer than this, but he gets the victory. They win. He's coming home, and out pops his daughter, his only kid. She comes out the door. She's dancing. She's, like, celebrating his victory. And he just breaks down and is like, I have to sacrifice my daughter because I got the victory. And so he ends up, she goes off for a while to mourn that she'll never have children, and then he sacrifices her. And so the story is like, we don't want to sacrifice our kids for success. We don't want to... We don't want to sacrifice our families on the altar of, and that's why I, I love this. Like you're, you're doing both. You know, I think it's Proverbs 10, I think it's 22, says the blessing of God makes one rich and adds no sorrow to it. All right, so like we want to, we want to succeed in business and have our family succeed, not yeah. sacrifice them on that altar. And, but I have to ask myself, myself looking at that, like how did this guy get there? Oh, he was hurt by his family. Yep. He was hurt. He had family wounds. He had family issues. And so all, all of his, he ends up wounding, not, not just wounding, completely destroying his family because his childhood wounds weren't healed. He's coming into this thing, a wounded boy that's now a powerful man that wants success in the, fa in the eyes of his brothers, in the eyes of his family. The very people that hurt him, he wants success there, and he's willing to destroy her to get it. And they're like, oh, your wounds got much worse because you didn't get them healed. And I think that, you know, that whole control thing, that whole belief system around control and, and just wanting obedience, not, not, not influence, not cooperation, we just want obedience, and I'm going to control you to get it. Like, that stuff comes from how we were raised, how we were brought up, or it's a reaction to how we were brought up. And so we have that thing. I think, I think it comes down to if I want to have the right beliefs, I probably also need to get healed from my stuff. Mm -hmm. So like that's what we, I focus a lot on that kind of thing. Like I actually want to bring healing and restoration to your theology about God, what you believe about God, because what you believe about God right now, I will take a fast rabbit trail. Like with kids, here's what I've seen. I've seen it for 21 years now. Kids believe their parents as theology no matter what Sunday school teaches them. So Sunday school can teach you Father God is loving. Father God is kind. Father God is patient. Father God loves you. And then they go home and the dad dad doesn't that kid will struggle to believe god is who god is because of dad because of mom because of their family situation so fast rabbit trail we become the theology our kids believe no matter what sunday school teaches them the areas of our lives where we are not displaying god's nature are areas that are going to struggle with god the areas that I'm wounded in theologically with God will be the areas I play out in my kids. So if I think God's a controller because my parents were controlling, I'll either react and never do that or I will become that thing and I will control you. But it comes back to my beliefs are shaped by my, by my family. 